Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Land Use Committee meeting here on Friday, September 1st. Uh, we are going to uh, get started with a continued discussion on the gateway zoning that we've been talking about for months. We had post last meeting talked about a group of properties that would actually um, along the Lafayette and corridors uh, that would make sense to possibly move into the gateway. So I had post put together that list and sent it out to the group to look at, I believe. It's approximately 57 properties on that list. And then we also talked about doing an analysis of a comparison of the gateway zonings and um, compared as compared to industrial, general business, mixed residential business, um, and those. So we're going to start by a discussion of the list of properties that we have put together. Oh. We'll start at the top of the list. Did anyone go through this, have any thoughts? I, my original thought was is that we would try to look at what might be, I want to say a slam dunk, but just it totally makes sense and there's really kind of almost no question that it should be moved into a different zoning. Properties to the ones that maybe require a bit more thought and might take a little bit more um, discussion. Did these, did these happen to get put on a map? Just. No, I, mean, I did I not. I had the intention, but not the time. We, yeah, we. Yeah, but we, that is my intention. To <laughs> get on. That, that would be yeah. really helpful. Yeah. No. I, yeah. Just a question, not a criticism. No, no. It's a goal. It took Peter and I this long just to get what we got yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> but we'll keep it, working it's on just, it. It's just hard to relate. Well, by mostly, mostly just an extension of uh, Gateway. I mean, the right. This we is. Looked at, so. These are all the properties that we looked at on the map when we were looking at the map. I had written them all down, and now I've just put but them like, in a. Uh, the gateway zone on Lafayette Road. I think we it's, looked at just right extending. To a second lot deep was what the discussion was, but there were some other discussions about, you know, Morona Road and right. talking about the um, office research and where that lies along the bypass and along Woodbury so we our discussion went farther so um, that's why I put in sort of sizes of lots uh, their current zoning and what we had sort of discussed as far as a gateway possibility and then put the analysis of the two together so that we could really take a look at it and I'm not saying we'll get this all done in one meeting but at least we'll keep continuing the conversation until we get somewhere yes Andrew uh, some industrial it's, it's, I think it's most industrial is a special special exception in G1 and G2. When changing from industrial to G1 or G2, does that then become by right? Or what are the limitations that would be instilled on that? Well, if you, it depends on what you're looking at. Because I, if you look at the side by side of industrial, office research, general business, mixed residential and garden department, it tells you in, in the materials, everything that's allowed by right and everything that's allowed by special exception. So um, it, it kind of depends on what you're talking about, right? Mm. If you want to talk about a specific use or a specific collection of uses that may or may not be allowed in the gate. I tried to do gateway separate from the other four as far as on tables so that you could put them side by side if you wanted to and really kind of analyze between the gateway and the industrial or office research or whatever we're looking at changing from what is allowed and what isn't. So aren't there really two tasks? One is the list of properties we might consider changing and then the other is to look at the zoning itself and whether that might need some massaging, right? Right, but I think the analysis of the different zonings was so as we were looking at changing, are we giving more or are we taking away? That's That I was the reasoning for putting up the permitted uses versus um, special exception uses. Anything is not a permitted in these districts is just not listed, right? I just sure, left it out, sure. so it made it a little bit straightforward. When you were rationalizing the list, Beth, did you add or delete anything from our very rambling conversation? Uh, I would say some of the stuff off of Woodbury, when I we, because we got so towards the end of that. So um, we talked about Commerce Way, but sort of more in general terms and the stuff by, by Oriental Gardens, Gosling Road. So those, I would say that we had such a lighter conversation. I just tried to include as many that seemed to make sense so that we could look at it a little bit further. You know, um, I hate to rezone 
like, let's say Heritage Avenue so that you can do uh, apartments because you know the post office looked like a good opportunity for that but then you know years down the road that could just turn into a row of apartments and you lose all the industrial right so, we were only that, looking at sort of one lot farther down yeah. I, I did put a question at the bottom I think about should all of Heritage have? Because that was a question we kind of asked. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't, didn't really, I didn't put all those properties on the list. I kind of just left that as more of a general question. I don't know. Is that an issue if you sort of just zone one building? Well, we're basically trying to do the lot that's next to Gateway already, right? We're just going. Right, but on Heritage Avenue, for instance, you know, where the post office <clears throat> is all the way down to the end? Yeah, they're not in this list. Oh, they aren't. Okay, no. well, Heritage Ave, I guess. Was Correct. Next, there are, but. but it's the property right behind right. Lafayette okay. Road where it's. Yeah, I know. That's, I would think that's kind of a given that we're doing that. Um, it would seem, you know, that's not a stretch. Oh, look, you brought it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, could I bug you to make it the satellite, <clears throat> the hybrid one? Thank you. I think while he's doing that, I'm not sure how much of a presentation Howard has in our short time frame. We don't have any presentations. It's just this discussion. Just even on the housing manual and all that? He's just got a verbal update. Okay. Oh. I'm just wondering if it makes sense to, once these properties are all on a map, that we can have a more substantive discussion so we don't get sidetracked on, well, is this one in or is this one out? And, I just it's so helpful to have it on I the map. I think what would help is if you get some feedback for what what represented on the map besides just highlighting the parcels. I mean um, existing zoning and parcels subject to, or being considered <coughs> for change. I think I mean for me. Yeah. But is there anything on this list that you guys just think we shouldn't even consider? I guess we could start there. Is there anything you've thought about since we talked about it? Because these are all the ones that we talked about, right? So, right. Um, is there anything that strikes you as just no? We shouldn't even talk about it. <laughs> I guess we we could start there, and then we'll take some away, and then we'll have less to look at, right? Yeah, I don't um, think so. <clears throat> my only consideration, or my only call out, would be. Is it worth our time to include like the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers building if we know that in the next however long? I, I know this is like a future consideration, but that building's not going anywhere. The, the military isn't going to get rid of that building tomorrow. Um, I don't disagree, but as devil's advocate, we actually talked about whether or not we even needed office research in the city anymore. Right. So. Sure. Okay, so it was just the change of zoning altogether. Okay. Not for redevelopment purposes. No, it has nothing to do with redevelopment. It's just it's. I don't want it to be left out at like an island like the two MRV lots no. are on yep. Lafayette Road. Now, I'd rather we really look at all of it inclusively, so that it actually makes holistic sense versus just leaving a lot out because we don't think it will get developed. I I would venture to say that the 2021 to 1601 Lafayette, which is the fringe of Elwyn Park, I think, mm -hmm. is that right? Nine through fifteen. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, no, 18. 18, okay, yep. Um, I, I would be hard pressed to think that you're gonna get redevelopment there. Um, you're gonna get quite a bit of pushback from residents as well as a lot of individual purchases that would have to align. So I, I don't know if that's, those lots are very shallow as well. It's mm -hmm. a main thoroughfare where access in and out would be very tough. You have a couple different signaled intersections. The DOT wouldn't be thrilled about any redevelopment there. Although consolidation of driveways might be looked at as a good thing. Uh, how does the city's uh, assessment work if the zoning would allow, because going from single family, if the zoning would allow a higher use, would they be taxed on that basis? Good question. Uh, I, mean, I don't know that off the top of my head. We can it's, it's a, ask that question. It's an up zoning, so it wouldn't right. be, you know, what they're currently doing wouldn't be uh, not permitted. Or we can certainly ask the tax assessor to give us that information. So I will put 
those as a potential strikeout. Anyone else comments on or agree with that or disagree with that? Which ones? When you were talking Lafayette, where were you? On the list, it's number 18. Is it, is it from it's the group little of orange square up to McKinney? Yeah, I, thought, I didn't think we were um, <coughs> considering those anyway. We talked about them, so I put everything we talked about yeah. on this list, right? Yeah, so, I agree. I don't think that side of the road is worth doing or rezoning. Yeah, it's all housing. Right, yeah. but does it make sense to have housing along that stretch of Lafayette? Um, maybe not. You know, in the long term, we're thinking long term. It doesn't doesn't say they can't continue forever. I don't know. But um, yeah, I, I think that's <laughs> that's a if tough sell. The reason yeah, I asked about the tax issue. question is, if they're not going to get hit with a higher tax bill, then it, it, it's only an upside for the landowners. But if their taxes go up, it's not an upside. So, it's actually number eighteen because uh, yeah, on the list right. it is eighteen, yeah, yes. not nine through fifteen. <laughs> you know, he a, me I mean, that's a pretty <laughs> well-established neighborhood. I know, yeah, I think people have lived there for a long time. <laughs> yeah, people enjoy living there. That's why they currently live there. Right. It's um, on Route One, but so what? I guess I would agree with Mr. Tellman <clears throat> about does it make sense to have residential there? Probably not, but it doesn't always make sense to have residential. <coughs> we have it today anyway, so <clears throat> it's not a this or that. It's more of like the feasibility of a future development, in my opinion. Yeah. It's, it, we're not talking about a taking. We're not talking about get rid of your houses. We're just yeah, talking yeah. about additional opportunities. So, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's back to the I, I taxes. Would, if, it, if their tax bill go up, would go up because of it, I wouldn't support it. But I, I guess. I don't know how the tax bill would go up. Well, if, if it got rezoned to <coughs> Gateway, they could do a higher, more intense development. So it would presumably be worth more money. And a commercial developer could buy a, a group with, of lots. Yeah. He's saying, would their appraisal come in? Would right. their properties be appraised differently if we change the zoning? Yeah. Right. I think it's the question. I, Thank you. I would think they would, but it depends on what the assessors would do. If, if we, they would do yeah. it. Right. We would have to ask the tax assessor yeah. that question, which we can certainly I mean, do. Shredding lightly on this, but there might be a current proposal, hypothetically, in this certain area that just got a little bit of pushback and that might be a good case study as to what that neighborhood thinks of any certain development going on in it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I guess I'm a little lost as to what you're arguing. There's a current doing. development on this street in this neighborhood that has received a little bit of pushback and I would use that as a pretty good preceding example for any certain change in context to that neighborhood. I would, I would leave the neighborhood alone. I yeah, except that, that that one does would require variances. So that's a whole different way to look but, at something. Yeah, I, I guess that is the biggest <clears throat> lot in consideration along this line of six or so. If you're addresses. talking about what's MRB? Yes. yes. That's not in that line. I understand. Yeah. But it's again, in the neighborhood. contextually, you look at what mm -hmm. could be done in that certain zone and the lot sizes that would allow for certain developments, and I don't think that you yield a high enough return as a zoning situation to make it worthwhile. You're talking just specifically the single family residential lots. Correct. Whether you combine them or not because of how shallow they are. Other thoughts? I, get, okay. I just get nervous about changing any, you know, SRB, any, I don't know, creating a different neighborhood, you know, I mean, uh, just because you used to live there, but then the lot next to you has changed, then it's changing. Um, that'd be my only concern. So we've agreed to take 18 off the list. Or do we still want to find out about taxes first? I'd like to know the answer to that question in any case as, as, we, as we go forward. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be in favor of putting any of those houses on the list, any part of that neighborhood. From a land planning perspective, what Rich just said is true. You don't generally want to have a zone change at the side lot line, but a zone change on the rear lot line is pretty normal. And you generally want to have similar zone across the street. Now, Lafayette's a big street, so that, that's a bit different, but um, just as general land planning practice. However, 
we can get the answer to the question as well so that we would know in the future. So, Because there's certainly other single uh, residence B uh, lots being considered along that road, such as a church, a dentist's office, and vacant land. So, you know, it's also... Is the hand on one of the lots? <clears throat> we put... Um... That's the westerly where his hand just was. Right. What I'm talking about is closer to the high school. But they're, they're still, it's, it's single residence B sure. going to something else. So. Sure. Well. <clears throat> uh, there's the church across from uh, McDonald's as well that's still, in, I believe, SRB. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think, a better candidate for redevelopment than any of the single family homes in that well entrenched neighborhood there. <laughs> the right. church is sort of an island. It is an island on the map. Yes, I agree. Is it on the list? I don't. I can't. Remember. It is. It is number twenty-two. I just figured if I numbered them, it'd be so much easier to refer. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I added Easier that. than using the map lot number. <laughs> right, exactly. If we use tack map and lot <laughs> addresses, they're all similar, so it's difficult. So, yeah, so we really feel 22 is, you know, totally makes sense when we're just talking about SRB to yeah. a gateway. <clears throat> yeah, I would definitely agree. I mean, if we saw, you know, what happened with the former St. James Church site um, that got redeveloped into housing. I, that's also on this list, which I think shouldn't yeah. be SRB as well. I mean, it's yeah. got 48 units on it right yeah. now. So it really makes sense to extend, I think, the gateway into that lot. Do we agree on that one? But yeah, definitely any office research, obviously, I mean, you've mentioned considering even getting rid of the whole office research um, zoning. So I definitely, any that's currently in the office research on our list right now, I would hope we consider, um, given the that offices and industrial parks aren't exactly uh, being built or being popular in any way. <laughs> what is number 27? Ooh. Oh, that's the hotel on the bypass. <coughs> Which one? Across from the car dealership at the corner of Borthwick, I'm pretty sure. The Port Inn that's up for um. redevelopment? Oh. Am I correct? Isn't that being redeveloped? It has a proposal. Yeah. It's not approved as of yet. It was. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's just it's initial. Discussion. Yeah, it's right. just been in discussion. It hasn't actually huh. gone forward, so. At least the last I knew. It's being studied. <laughs> Anything else comes that people want to talk about? What What's is your question down to bottom? But should West Road be something other than industrial? Uh, this was a question that we discussed because West Road runs right along with Lafayette, and uh, you all brought up that question. That's why when some general questions were brought up. Does it make sense to change, so if we're going to change what runs along Lafayette, because we don't even have G1 now along Lafayette, and we're looking at too deep, you guys said, does it make sense to look at West Road? So I put it there so that we could continue the conversation. Is, is there an actual difference between the light purple? Oh, okay. O yes, R O R. That's O R. And um, what's M? M is municipal. Municipal. That's oh. uh, community campus. Well, what's the M on West Road? The There's tiny. a tiny little, I think, pump station there. Oh, okay. Sorry, I couldn't see the difference. But the darker purple around it's that It's industrial. industrial. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, so that question came up, so I didn't want us to not discuss it or keep discussing it since it was brought up by the group. Should there be a new zone that isn't as, as 
historic is industrial and office research, perhaps. Does, does Gateway do enough, or? Well, and that's what gets back to us continuing to look at the differences between Gateway and industrial, and what's allowed and what's not allowed. And there's. I mean, I have changing this area to Gateway would certainly allow for housing to be built if it, someone wanted to build on top of Market Basket or, you know what I mean, or go up or, um, I mean, that area, there's services there, there's, you know, now there's ball fields. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of... That's not incorrect. I think that's a valid you know. pattern there. Do I think it's imminent? No. Yeah. And I think that a lot of those industrial uses are well established, much like the Pike Industries, Banfield Road situation where you're neighboring those two? So, yeah, Gateway 1 has about 43 permitted uses and industrial has 31. I do remember taking note that there is one thing that's only allowed in industrial that's not allowed anywhere else as I was reading through all this, and that was a social service campus, which I'm not even sure if we have any or what they would even be considered a social service campus. Um, it's permitted in a industrial and it's not permitted anywhere else in our zoning, but that is the only thing I noticed wasn't permitted in another zoning district. And the gateway does allow many industrial uses, but they're all special exceptions. Where in industrial, right. they're permitted. Mm. I write. The main difference, <clears throat> but while I remember, it, between OR and Gateway 1 is the um, OR allows for a hospital where Gateway doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, the use is pretty much aligned with what's permitted in OR versus what's allowed in Gateway. Gateway. A social service campus is supposed to be 25 acres minimum, is that? I don't, we don't have a whole lot of that's properties. A, that's a strange. It is a strange. <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> that's why I bring it up because I'm like it was just something I noticed was not allowed. It's very. I, I'm not even entirely sure if we even have anything that would. What's really funny is I was noticing in all of this, and I think I wrote it down somewhere because I found it odd. Was the um, fact that we have a water park and water park. Museum parks, water parks, theme parks are not allowed in any of our districts. But we do have one. <laughs> I thought we should. <laughs> um, and, you know, and when I was looking at all this, the gap with restaurants, you either have a 50 person restaurant or you're 250 and there's there's nothing for approvals in between. So um, that seemed to be a really big gap in my mind. Yeah. something if we're going to look at changing what these zonings are flagging those things seem to be important to do so because when we started to really look at the um, like oriental gardens why is oriental gardens being a um, OR. OR, yeah, it's it's in the office research, along with a lot of the Commerce Way office buildings, which OR and G1, as you point out, it just gives them a little bit more flexibility if you take away the OR and move it into G1. But a little bit of flexibility wouldn't affect their tax or anything or the property value or their I don't think so because office research would already be a commercial district right yeah so you probably already have a higher base value for assessments would be I would assume if we're going from like office research to G1 that it would be a similar base value because similar things are allowed it would be whether or not you're going from a residential district to a business district yeah, that yeah. there might be the jump and change but I have wrote that question down, so I will definitely ask. Yeah, I think it's important. Important for us to know as we start to analyze and look at this and talk about it. So assisted living is only allowed in general business? Mm-hmm. That could be a... It's, yeah, it's, I want to say, hang on, I keep going between two different documents here. 
I believe it's by special exception in other ones. In the gateway. In the gateway, yeah. Gateway allows it by special exception. Allowed in the char uh, well, CD4 and CD5. Yeah. So some of the character districts, keep in mind this isn't all our districts either, so. Um, what are the criteria for the special exception? Are they onerous? No. They're not hugely onerous, no. Did we come to any decision about the office research zone on Lafayette Road? The one, you know, between Campus Drive and Market Basket? We were just talking about it. Do you have more you want to talk about? Go. No, well, um, what are we thinking for that? I mean, I would think. Either Gateway 1 or 2, I think, was what Yeah, I for read. office research. Right. Okay. <clears throat> But then I, I guess I would leave West Road alone. And that's fine. Yeah, I, it was yeah. the question brought up the last time. That's why I just left it as a general question. Okay. Um, hang on. Nine to, nine to 15 is the OR. Yep. That's the OR district, yeah. yeah. Nine to 15. I clumped them all together because they were in such a straight shot road. So we definitely want to move those to G1, or at least keep those on a green-lighted sort of list to continue to look at. So is the orange G1 and the other G2, or what, vice versa? Uh, orange up here is G2, and then and that's G1. G1. So you could go either way because it goes <laughs> in both directions. <laughs> <coughs> And the differences between those two, if you look at the analysis, is really just there's more intensive uses, probably, um, like the hospitals and things like that that are allowed in G1 that aren't allowed in G2. Mm -hmm. So hospitals, but what about medical? Medical outpatient is allowed. Mm -hmm. Is not allowed? Is allowed. Is allowed. Is allowed. In G2? In both. In both. both. Yeah. I was thinking that as well, as medical kind of shifts to a smaller footprint overall. But a standalone hospital is only permitted in one district, and that's OR. Okay. OR. So we would have to, if we so made the decision to look at getting rid of that, we'd probably have to obviously look at putting hospitals into either another district or, you know, we'd have to shift things around. Conference I find it interesting that G2 allows for a restaurant, like takeout only, fast food, or 50 person, but then G1 is the 250 occupancy. You, right. That's where I noticed the real they almost split. don't. I guess, okay, I guess G1 allows takeout only as well, or fast food. I didn't see the fast food, and so I was like, that would be just as impactful. You can do a more intense restaurant in G1 than you can in G2. Yeah. For example's sake, um, yeah. are you familiar with the emergency room in Seabrook that Portsmouth Hospital just built? No. Okay. I hardly ever leave Portsmouth. It's just emergency services <laughs> and a standalone pad. Um, like what they did in Dover? Similar, yeah. Now, wait a minute. You said you don't leave Portsmouth, so. <laughs> Sorry. I, I was born in Dover, so I do sometimes have to go I'm there. Wonder, I'm wondering what that would be classified as. Because it's not standard outpatient. Uh, it would, but it would be more outpatient because I don't think they keep people overnight, right? Right. Emergency. Okay, so it's services. really just that the stay. Correct. It's okay. whether or not you actually have rooms sure. and keep people. I didn't know if there were other like TAC considerations or something like that. I think looking at your questions at the bottom and thinking about some of the things that are going on regionally and locally, some of the outdoor uses aren't really contemplated by our current zoning, like uh, say a big pickleball court complex or something like that, even tennis or other recreation things. Recreation that that's in some Recreation of facilities, which could be commercial, not necessarily municipal. I think that's... Uh, we have indoor and outdoor recreation uses. We do, yeah. I believe, oh, a lot of those are allowed under accessory uses, if I remember correctly. Accessory to the principal. I mean, outdoor is permitted in Gateway 1 and 2. 
in here. Outdoor what though? Because recreation right. use. So you could have where is it? Number nine on both of them. And I would also mention like the Flight House Gym has a gym and a pickleball facility in the same building. Yeah, outdoor recreation uses are permitted in both gateway districts. But it's going to be depending on how it's defined because outdoor recreation could be walking through the uh, salt marsh area or it could be a commercial pickleball court complex right, with so 12 courts for, for profit. It, it is athletic fields, golf courses, <clears throat> tennis courts, and swimming pools. Um, As a principal use? Yeah, for outdoor recreation. Okay. No pickleball. That's right. <laughs> tennis court, I think. I'm not getting behind any pickleball. That was, that was probably written before pickleball was even a yeah. uh, Yes, yes. But they've got a sound issue they have to deal with. Yeah. That's why I raise it. <laughs> yes, Andrew. It's not quite as loud as a rock hammer, but, you know. <laughs> Just as annoying. <clears throat> Other properties on the list that we want to. I mean, we had I originally can't, started I can't tell with a map. Sorry. He wants, has to look at the map. Yeah. Even though we looked at the map the last time. I know. <laughs> to I know. Come up with the list. <laughs> but to see the you know the, the subtle changes and nuances that you yeah. did and it's just hard to. So. Do I pull the first one, 126 Lang Road? Might as well start there, since we never really talked about that one in this. It does look like a uh, rather discontinuous group of colors up there. Mm -hmm. So right there. You're, Was it um, this one? That one. This is behind service credit unit? <clears throat> yep. So that's number one on our list. So that's the one that's in Garden Apartment Mobile Home, and whether or not we'd want to switch that one to G1. And when we look at the analysis between the two, um, it certainly seems like you're allowed to do just as many, if not more, things in G1 as you are in the, obviously, the garden apartment and mobile home. I didn't really notice anything other than a mobile home part. Um. <laughs> well, that's G1 right now beside it, right? G1. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. It does, yeah. That's you know where all this conversation started, just looking at stuff that was next to it. What is the uh, panhandle part of that? This? That's wetlands. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And um, yeah. And Patriots Park, we had actually talked about, because that is uh, also a garden apartment mobile home. We had talked about because especially that front section, whether or not we wanted to, since G1 is already right next to it as well, whether or not that made sense, the undeveloped sort of portion of it. Mm -hmm. Or do we want all of it? I, I don't know. And most of it's wet, I believe, in the back as well. Yeah. yeah. I think the front part definitely makes sense. Yeah, I think the front. I didn't mean to force going line by line, but... Well, it's really the only organized way to get this done. <laughs> um, and then we were looking at the warehouse building that is on Heritage, just, nope, right, literally right next door. Yep, right there. That lot right there, I believe, is number, that's 55 Heritage. Yep, look at that. Because I really did try to do this in order to how we looked at them. So we talked about if we're going one lot deeper, because then that brings in the lot across the street as well, which is the 70 Heritage Ave, the storage unit complex, whether or not it made it sense to drag G1 back just one lot deeper on Heritage Ave. So not the whole street, as you had mentioned, Bob, but just those two lots right there. Mm. I guess the argument could be made both ways. I would look at the now McKinnon's, previously Shaw's Plaza development, which now has housing and soon to have more housing, as con like someone <coughs> say, oh yeah, I live out on Constitution Ave and be like, 
what the hell are you doing out there? But in all reality, if you said that for Heritage Ave, I think it would be the same impression. Overall, the difference being that retail component and the mixed use component. In the future development sense, sure, Heritage Ave could probably have some of that as well. Um, but again, being hard pressed to see all those properties change and become something similar. Right, yeah, I think the 70 and 100 is the lot highlighted plus the lot that has more storage units on it because they're under that one, yeah. They're under similar ownership as why I included both of them. Does ownership di dictate any? No, but it made a sort of a straighter shot when you click on both of them that yeah. seemed to make sense. They kind of go together. But we don't have to include those, obviously. We just hate to lose any industrial because yeah. we don't have any. There's literally none left. So you don't want to look at those. We'll take those off the list. No, well, it's my opinion. But it's three, four, five. Anyone else thoughts? I just wonder if that if this starts to highlight the question I made earlier about whether we need something, maybe not called industrial, but industrial you know, transitional tracks. use. Because I think we're seeing, change, like office research isn't really a big thing anymore. And even office buildings downtown are having a hard time. Uh, and what we called industrial 40 years ago isn't really what we're calling industrial today. So are we missing, are, you know, are businesses wanting to come to the city that can't find a spot? Yes. We need to find so maybe we put those on the list that we continue the conversation and we take a specific look at what are the different business uses between a gateway and industrial. Got a list. Go on list here. <coughs> All right. Back up the page. Um, so Constitution Ave. This is the. Um, yeah. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Right, also right behind G1, and we were looking at the possibility of going, I believe, across the street as well. It's, uh, I believe, both of those. So, yeah, there's so there's technically two properties in the one that's highlighted, and then there's that property which is already partially G1, and then the rest is not, because that's water country. So the question is whether or not those two uh, make any sense as well. Or what are our thoughts around those two properties being added to what they're already surrounded by, which is G1? So water country is G1 and industrial. Well, it, right. correct. It's G1 up front, and then it's industrial. So we talked industrial about just making land. the whole lot one. That was a big loss for of industrial land when they went in. Do you think they're going to change? What about when you, when you think of industrial and the loss of things, are you thinking like a manufacturing plant or uh, warehouse manufacturing? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's not always traditional. You know, like what we thought of as a machine shop or something like that. But there's a there's a big call for industrial space, and no one can find it. Even like distribution space, overhead doors, loading docks, yeah. things to that effect that allow companies to have an address here if they're not a retail component. Like the new proposal out of fees? Um, yeah, that's mm -hmm. one That's one concept, Good certainly. Example. Another one in... What, what was that? So the, there's a new distribution center going in at fees. Furniture distribution? Yeah, but I don't think that's... I'm not saying instead of, I'm just saying as an example of a use that you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, that's, or, that's uh, one scale of it there are a lot smaller scales as well a lot of e-commerce distri distributors or um like port city pretzel is a good example where it's a small food vendor they just needed uh, warehousing and inventory space overhead door for distribution and then it's you know that's yeah. a very light use to me uh granted they're not all like that but that property that's but there are like, still machine shops and yeah manufacturers 
laid in out in the space. area um, yeah. that are looking to expand or buy their own place. Or, I'm, see, yeah. I'm seeing a scale difference between some of these with machine shops and other things, even Port City Pretzel probably being smaller in terms yeah. of tra traffic than some of the larger. But assembly plants and that sort of thing—that's that's a that that's been a more more of a hot use in recent years. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the anticipation of okay, if that becomes a warehousing building, and then there is some opportunity for residential. Now you have competing uses, and all of that truck traffic or the distribution component becomes uh, very litigious. I think, in my opinion. Yeah because of that truck traffic. Well, where, we sort where, of saw that on Banfield Road. Yeah, I was right? going to say, where previously we've been driving those trucks intentionally that way. Um, if, granted, projects got done and there are houses there now, but... So what I hear from all of you is a concern that maybe the ones that are currently industrial properties, we should pull out to a separate and do a separate analysis of what it would mean as a difference from industrial to gateway. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like housing is more compatible with office use or the office research zone and the uses in it than industrial. It doesn't always mix well. Yeah. Right. Well, and part of it, I think, is a problem with the label because industrial classically means things that are definitely not compatible with housing. Yeah, yeah. But I think some of the uses we're talking about could, on a certain scale, could be compatible with nearby housing, not necessarily next door, but nearby. So... That wouldn't include the pike plant. But. <laughs> yeah, and with that said, I mean, obviously the overarching goal of this meeting, this committee, I think at the very moment, is the creation of housing or the ability to create housing. But with that said, the gateway also has a lot more conducive uses for some of the flex spaces that we're talking about, some of the more dynamic, quote-unquote, industrial, light industrial space. So. Obviously, my brain goes to like, well, how can we create housing but in a not competing area? But at the same time, this gateway component has so much more ability. It's so much more, more flexible mm -hmm. to it. Um, but obviously, if you give a mouse a cookie, people are going to go and try to create that housing, and and that's where you're going to get a headache. I think when we originally created the gateway. It was a chance for housing to come where there are strip malls, and yes. that was the idea. And it's starting, right? We're actually starting yeah. to see that and see little pocket communities and neighborhoods being built. So the idea of extending it is to try to promote the idea that more of that has the flexibility to happen. And it's funny, your comment about you don't leave Portsmouth. <laughs> Sometimes in my day-to-day -day business where people come to town and they want to move to Banfield Road and I'm like, whoa, like, what do you mean? But in all reality, you have to kind of like step back and say, well, it's a beautiful house in a small little neighborhood. It's two seconds to this, two seconds to that. Like, you do have to reset yourself and reset your perspective on that because ultimately people have so many different backgrounds. We welcome people from all over and so that could be driving it rather than just the demand for housing itself. It's like, maybe they don't want to live in a Lincoln Ave style neighborhood or a Market Street style downtown neighborhood. So there are those uh, preferences as well. And I apologize, I have to step out. I have a funeral I have to go to. But um, I'll, if I have more notes, I'll send them to you. And I appreciate it. The conversation will keep going. Good to see you. Yeah. We're just starting to try to segregate what we're going to talk more about and what we think is easier to move forward with. Um, okay. <laughs> so I've basically just started to sort of put a a uh, slow down section together and a section so that we can start to divide this just into maybe two lists to continue the conversation. Um, I know campus drive, when we're talking about community campus, that's really been moved to municipal yeah. at this point. So we might just take that off the list. Um, we have the two MRB lots that uh, sit next to Westerly. Yep. We have those. Oh, yeah. I swear I them I really is the address is zero zero zero. They're only zoned MRB because that's Westerly sitting on twenty seventy five. I think I missed it. Did I? <laughs> You know, I am not a perfect person, although I do strive to be a perfect person every day. I will add that in. It should have been right in this section. 
Clearly, I somehow missed it. Which one has the address 000 Lafayette? Uh, that's just the vacant lot that's right yeah, next right. to it. Yeah. yeah. What number are you on? I'm sorry. Uh, we're looking at 1670. Yes. That's what we thought. I'm like. Those are under common ownership too, aren't yes. they? Yeah. They are, yes. Which is why, if they have common ownership, you try to look at them together. It's kind of a dumb zoning because it's only zoned that way because there was a business there. So it was carved out. It should be SRB. In my opinion. Or the whole thing should be gateway, like we talked about earlier. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Since there is already businesses there. I think you ruin that neighborhood if you make that gateway. But changing the zoning doesn't change the neighborhood; it just creates different opportunities. So, but I guess I've said that already. <laughs> just a grammatical question on number thirty-three, one hundred. Is that Coakley Road? Not Co Coakley. What number? 33. Oh, yeah. I misspelled. Yeah, that happens. I fixed it. <laughs> I was getting a little googly eyed looking at all these, clearly. Well, changing those to um, SRB or anything like that would be a down zoning. Um, yeah, but I mean, I think we should take the westerly and then on the other side to continue G1, but that's my my thought on all of this. I don't know what other people agree with that or disagree with that. Not that this, these changes are imminent, but should we wait for that proposal to be not active? There isn't anything right now. I think they're coming back or something. They got denied. Yeah. They, yeah, they were denied, yeah. And anyway, this discussion doesn't affect that. They can still proceed. Yeah, because they're already there. Or they already came forward. So what do we, I mean, the westerly makes sense in my mind to go to G1 when you have 48 units on that land. And that is only you got variances, right? Right, kind of doesn't matter now. Yeah. You know? It's already built out, they're condos. Never for the moment, yeah. But <laughs> if, if you keep the other one as MRB on the other side of Hoover, it makes sense to have that not being a non-conforming use anymore. So there is a logic to it from a zoning perspective. Can you, can you talk into the speaker? Okay. From a zoning perspective, if you change the one that's highlighted now to MRB, and then you look at, if you keep the MRB on the northeast corner, there, there is a logic to keeping that because then you'd have consistency across Hoover. Uh, whereas if it stays as a non-conforming use, even though it's built out, it's a non-conforming use. So there's more logic to downzoning it to residential. So there's the the rationale. What should we? How should we move forward to continue the conversation? On that lot, I would just leave it. I'd change it to gateway. To because, gateway? Yeah. It doesn't affect it, doesn't adversely affect it at all, and it, it's more logical in the map to fit with everything else. Mm -hmm. The western. So what would that uh, allow, say, that owner to do if it were gateway? Without a variance, very little. So same as, <laughs> same as it is now. Same as, yeah. I mean. <laughs> Yeah. The, so, uh, the lot whatever. is not very conducive to some of those things. Andrew, speak. The lot is just not very conducive to that, particularly with the amount of land they have and yeah. what some of those uses demand. I guess I'm ambivalent about that uh, lot or those two lots. So. It depends a little bit on what, way. what we do on the, the little lots, I think. If we, the little lots stay MRB, there's a lot more logic to making the big lot MRB, in my mind. Which lots? 
just saying big lots, small lots doesn't help everyone in the south market. side of Hoover. <laughs> uh, if you're if you're looking at the northeast side, keeping it MRB, then I think it makes sense to change the south side of Hoover and the east side of Lafayette to MRB. Okay. So there's consistency. Um, isolated zoning like that little patch of orange. I hate the term spot zoning, but it gets close and um, it makes it more difficult to continue that, especially if they need slight relief. Right. So. I mean, I think it makes sense. I know the West Philly is fairly new and whatnot, but I think it makes sense to make it more conforming by changing it to the G1 at this point. That, and that would continue down from what's right next to it already. And then it would make sense to continue that to those two lots, but I think that's subject to whatever this group talks about and wants to move forward. Or which list to put it on? <laughs> should we put a, should we? Put, put it the, in the, the more south, discussion or put, less well, discussion? Well, put the south side as changing and the north side as question mark for now. Is that? Okay. So okay. I'm just doing two different colors, one that we'll talk more about and one that we'll try to, you know, put together a list that we really feel strongly about. Okay. Um, then we have. We removed 18. Oh. There's, well, I have 19, 20, and 21 are all industrial, so we had talked about taking any industrial lots and putting them into a future comparison, so. Yeah, and those were these three lots? <clears throat> yeah, those lots right at the end where we have so much G2 there already, which is why I put G2 for those. That's the, yeah, the um, glass company and auto repair places. Uh, and we already talked about the church and how that SRB should be definitely moved forward to a change. And then that brings us all the way down to where we have split the bypass in Route 1 because everything else is gateway at this point. So we'll slow down. Um, yep, right in that corner there's a dentist's office and the vacant land behind it. Those two lots. Exactly. That's 23 and 24. which are currently an office building and a vacant lot. Yeah. Thoughts? A vacant lot? Wow. Church it's owned by the church. The church, church. Oh. The church owns it. Which church? The Greek. Oh, the Greek church. <coughs> yeah. I'm okay with those being uh, So well. Gateway. Continue the conversation, but put them on a positive list. Yeah. Yep. Positive versus negative, keep looking at. All right. Uh, next was the car dealership. So we go down the bypass at this point. There was a car dealership that we talked about because it's an industrial and GRA, which I think it's at the corner of, um, it's way down. Oh. At Co Cottage. There we go, right there on the right. Corner of Cottage and the bypass, that purple. Yeah. That one. That's that. That is number 25. I get there eventually. <laughs> so that we, I remember when we were having our conversation, we were like, well, this just seems crazy that we have it. It's partially in GRA, yeah. in that little corner, right? And then the rest of it's in industrial. So, and right. there's no industrial really even around it. So I'm not quite no. sure how it ended up in industrial and that. So that kind of makes sense that it would go probably either to, to the G1. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. I don't hear a whole lot of complaints about that one. Um, then next was right across the street at the medical office. Nope, across Cottage Street. Yep. It was a GRA. That's number 26, 185 Cottage Street. And uh, yeah, we talked about whether or not it made sense to leave that as um, GRA or if it made sense to continue because we just were looking at the one across the street as changing. Yeah, I would, I would change that. Yeah, GRA there doesn't make any G1 sense. G1 or G2, I, I wasn't really sure which one makes more sense, but we can continue that more in-depth conversation. Yeah. I'm just trying to make the list more manageable so that yeah. we can split them up. Um, after that is we're talking across the street, the general business. That's where um, we have the hotel. Yep. Yep. 
and we have general business and that was one of the reasons why I added general business to our analysis so because we have very little general business left we actually used to have a lot of it downtown before we moved to the character district so as I was looking at it I thought does general business really make sense anymore I think we really should probably look at uh, the general business versus the gateways and see whether or not they're just so similar that general business because there's very few lots in our city that still have GV designations so I thought as a whole we could take a look separately take a look at at that as well hmm. anyone agree disagree I think it makes sense to look at it like that because general business sounds to me like a more of a historic classification yeah. it is gateway, because it was very much our downtown was general business before we moved to the character districts and all of a sudden I realized we still have some outside of downtown that hasn't I just think it's more of a cleaning up to compare and see if um, they're pretty equal then it makes sense to move our general business that's going on over there you can see it's around the traffic circle it's like pretty much the only place I found it anymore I'll do some more digging, but I don't think I found it anywhere. Which is else. ironic because you would imagine a traffic circle to be rudimentally the gateway to our city. So, <laughs> so yeah, so I, as I started to look at it, I said, here, we did talk a lot. <laughs> and a lot of these are residences here along here. Right, yeah, that is a little neighborhood, mm -hmm. and it's in general business, right. yeah. I did not put all of these for the record on this list, but I wanted to make sure that I mentioned as I was looking at it, I thought maybe we should separately look at GB because then it also, I did put on the list when it goes up, yeah, up along um, that whole area there. And those, uh, we kind of skipped the Borthwick properties. <coughs> yeah, we have well, the, those are all OR. Right? Yeah, we have a bunch of OR that, um, we can take a look at because we've already decided the OR should be anywhere it's there I guess near the hospital mm. but I think the near the hospital if you went to gateway there's more short-term medical uses that could actually also yeah. Yeah. With, the be exception, possibility. with the exception of the Liberty Mutual parking lot is Borthwick entirely built out at this point I don't know but the redevelopment happens sometimes too so yeah. I think we have to think of it not as whether or not it's built out, but whether or not something else could change. Another one of our general business ones once we get down there. Oh, I never moved, so that would make a Oh, yeah, and here's the Coakley Road. Like See, I did add the Coakley Road and all those general right. businesses ones here. I didn't think I did, but I did. Look at that. 33, 34, 35, 37. I was smarter than I thought. Um, if yeah, if you want to go up this, yeah, I, I add, yeah, all of those are the ones that are GB. They're like in the 32 to 37 kind of time frame. We go up the Spalding Turnpike, we're at number 38, and that's where we get general business and SRB. Is 38 the Mazda dealership? It's 120, so click on it. What's the address say? It's 180, so it must be co co need to change to that to SB for skinny business. Skinny business. What's that one? That's 120. So that's uh, 38 is that lot right there. Because it is general business. And, and what is, what is that, what's in that SRB zone just beyond it? I think it's all what? There's a 300 foot. Power line easement. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's mostly a power line, line easement. <laughs> There's almost nothing in there. <laughs> and probably never will be because of the power line easement. A lot of it's wet, too, I think, isn't it? There is a lot of wetlands in there as well. Yeah, it's fairly wet. So, did we put that in the what category would you put that? Make sense or more discussion? I think we're looking at G all GB makes sense to look, talk about, right? I think so, yes. Uh, are there any other intermediary zones that would be more suitable for the transition from GB to something else? That's and maybe say. that can be part of our conversation, yeah. About that. Yeah, because there's also 201 Echo Ave at 43, which is also GB. Yep, I, 
tiny little one. <laughs> Which I think actually is a house. <laughs> it's two units. And then we have the, the other car dealership is actually in Gateway. So then we actually moved to Gateway all, all the way through that. And so then we back into Oriental Gardens is where we go after the turnpike and the general business aspect. And that's when we talked about um, more office research and whether or not it makes sense in these. So on, let me just back up. On 200 Spalding Turnpike? Yep. Were we advocating changing the general business to one of the G ones or twos? Possibility. It was not, also, not the SRB's portion of that lot? We don't have to change the SRB portion. We could leave it SRB. Okay. Um, it's just, it is we were going to look at general business as a whole to see if what has right. currently general business makes more sense. Yeah. So oh, we can look at both. It, right well, now we're just talking. So we can look at keeping it Gateway and SRB. We could look at maybe Gateway 1 and Gateway 2. What would be, um, what or would be the reason two? to leave that as SRB? It's, it's a power line he's been. Oh, I thought, were you referencing <laughs> the Marine place? Yeah. Right. There's a 300-foot there's a power line he's been that runs the Strip all right through, through the back of all these properties, so they're all split zoned. Right. Peter, Peter, do you know if somebody wanted to redevelop that, would it make a difference from a density calculation if the zoning were changed? <coughs> right, if only a portion of it was zoned gateway, you yeah. would only be able to use that portion. That, for that. portion for the density. So yes. it would make a difference. So if it, if the zoning changed, they right. could they could do more out front. Yeah. With, right. That's true. All right, we've got 30 minutes left as far as our goal goes, so okay. we'll keep going down the list. Keep going. We're out on Woodbury Ave now, so we have the Oriental Gardens, um, Gosling Road area. Uh, yeah, all, basically all those properties you're looking at there, which are um, all in office research. We pretty much have office research all the way down there and in the back into Commerce Way as well. Should Oriental Gardens be purple or should it be... Yeah, it's uh, Oriental Gardens really shouldn't be office research, no. But that's what it's currently, so I mean, that's why it makes sense to try to change that to something. Uh, we were talking about changing things to Gateway, but maybe we look at, I don't know. Make it what it is, Garden Home. Yeah. Yeah, garden. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it, it's certainly it an affordable type of housing. Yeah. Gateway, wouldn't it? It's a, it seems like a good well, thing. It would at least be conforming. Well, no, I mean, I don't think manufacturing housing is allowed. And Not permanent. Gateway. No. Manufactured housing parks are only allowed in GAMH. Which which parcel is that on our Oriental Gardens? It's that big purple right there. Yeah, I know on the map. 44. Now now I'm going to your list because Oh my list forty four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Isn't it nice I numbered these to make life easier? <laughs> So if it became Gateway, that might mean a change to Gateway to allow It would be use. more conforming as Gateway than it would be as office research, that's for sure. That doesn't make any sense as office research other than... And it if, doesn't. Yeah. And what's the, what's the out parcel if that becomes... What is it? Yeah, right there. What's that one? That's OR. Uh, is that on the list? What What is it? It's 114 Gosling. Yeah. I'm not sure what that is. Um... It's not on my list. It's not Clearly, the gas, I didn't go not the gas station, find that. No. No. It's, um... Oh, isn't that the, uh, um... propane, maybe, right? Or no, isn't that the gym? No, I think there... This is, um... I think there's a gym, an so indoor gym right there. A lot of... Isn't it a big like industrial a, building? Uh, fuel. There's a big... A lot of trucks in that area. Yeah. Mm. yeah. There you go. Who's mm. the little man? I forget what's there, but, uh... No, it's across the street. Go buy it. Yeah. And then... Uh, oh, it's a rider, right? right? Yeah. Oh, here, uh, here we yeah. go. It's not on the list. We certainly could add it, but... Um, yeah, I would add that. And isn't the other one in the animal hospital? On... Uh, the animal hospital is... 150? That was, what, 114?
yeah, Commerce, all the Commerce Way ones are all office research, which we can leave if we are fine with that. We had started to talk about whether or not it made sense to take a look at those or not. I think there was that one lot that's um, behind Oriental Gardens that's W-I-O-R and O-R. It's in both. Uh, right there. I believe so, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. See, it's in the O-R and that lot, um, which got parceled off of public service, so. Not yeah, sure. It's all wet down. It's got yeah, a good portion of it. Commerce yeah. Way and Oriental Gardens. Mm -hmm. So, once again, do we want to take a look at all these office research to leave them in office research, or do we think they make sense looking at? It goes back to my competing uses thought. Mm hmm. Got quite a bit of uh, heavy industrial over there on the river. Yeah. Right, you're talking about the 38, that 38 acres? Uh, yes. Yeah. So maybe leaving that one alone? Well, the, the office research, though, is uh, if you go down Portsmouth Boulevard, yeah. it abuts housing. It does. In a hotel. Yes. So. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the hotel is definitely not allowed in office research. I know there was talk of taking those tanks down at one point. Mm -hmm. On uh, Gosling. Well, picking up on what you said earlier, Beth, I'm thinking office research, general business, and gateway all need to be looked at together, I think, because of the conversation we're having. And, mm -hmm. you know, do these zones fit? And then we can f see how they fit the ground as well. Because some slight changes that might make sense to maybe there's now three industrial zones or whatever we end up with yeah we have two industrials now waterfront industrial and just regular industrial and office research and general business and <coughs> maybe there's just too many and I think the last thing we really um, started to look at was the uh, oh, you have one thousand market yep one thousand market because it was in the OR which has G2 right oh, across right. the street. Do you mind zooming in, Peter? He's zooming out. Uh, i got to zoom out first. <laughs> <laughs> the other zoom. Yeah. I guess that falls in the category of changing all of OR to G something. Right, right. So it's, it's an OR that probably needs to have more discussion and talk about it. And then the the right aid. For some reason, I put the right aid in here, and I think it's because I. It might be split uh, on the other end. I yeah, it's right there at the corner. I can't. So that's, nope, that's next corner. What is that? Is that the is corner? Oh side? yeah, that's so it. It's that's, currently uh, in. So there's a little bit of MRB here, and this has has weird zoning. And I think that's why it, I put Splitting. it on the list because yeah. yeah, yeah. it seemed to be it has a, a split zone. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and that was why I was like, there was some reason why it yeah. brought my attention to. I was like, well, maybe we should talk about that because it is split zone between MRB and Gateway, and it, I'm not quite sure why it got split zone like that. Now, what's a little yellow on the corner? Municipal. That's municipal. Yeah. Were there houses on that before? Is that why? The houses are across the street. I'm pretty sure on Granite Street. I don't think there's anything to the left. There might have been one where the CVS is. Maybe, but once Rite Aid got built, so maybe Rite Aid, it, if Rite Aid is there, I think it got rid of all of it. So I think just moving that all to the yeah. G Gateway District makes um, sense. The G1, it's G1 and MRB, but I think just G1 makes sense for that one. We've made it to the bottom of that list. That's pretty amazing. So um, we've changed the list a little bit, and we've kind of put it into two categories, something that seems to make more sense and something that might need more conversation. So I can split this up and uh, that conversation can continue next time. Go back to our agenda.
Um, we also had started to take a look at home occupations and home occupations, um, obviously, home occupation one and two we looked at last time and then Peter was nice enough to get us out the um, some other jurisdictions and I thought that that was extremely helpful to start to look at some of those other jurisdictions and what they have in there. And I'm just wondering if people have any thoughts of like a direction of one specific other jurisdiction or if you want to pull things from each of them and we can take a stab, Peter and I, of pulling something together and what like what you appreciate, don't appreciate, thoughts? Um, Provoking conversation. What's our goal of with the home occupation? create more uh, we were asked by the City Council to take a look at home occupations for things like having um, students come a couple of students come oh, right. for um, whether it be art lessons or music lessons or coding le we have just something you know tutoring of any sort of kind yeah. um, so we're because it's not allowed really anywhere and to have people actually come to the home and some of these give us good ways of, of looking at possibility of doing that so that was where the conversation started and I think that looking at some of these other ones some you know they, they run the gamut, that's for sure. Some are more, way more detailed than what we have in our definitions and whatnot. So I just wasn't sure if there was a specific one that anyone sort of gravitated to as you liked the way it was set up or didn't. I don't know. Did you read it? <laughs> yeah. There was a lot to go through, I know. I gave you a lot. <laughs> So are we looking at tweaking our home occupation? Right, and we were looking for other ideas and direction to give us in which to go in as far as. So we have Rochester, Concord, Manchester, Nashua. Am I missing anyone? Yeah, I put them in alphabetical order. So we have Concord was the first one that's on here. I think, you know, minor home occupation is a... Uh, kind of makes sense they go into a lot a lot of details I mean I think about my childhood and my mother ran a beauty shop out of our basement all of my growing up years right that was something that was allowed for her to do but I'm not sure that we allow that sort of thing now because it requires clients coming and visiting the home and that's where we don't seem to have any allowances for things like that so what if folks read these and send in notes, things you like, things you don't like, and then we can come up with a draft to work from? Compile. Okay. I think that's Compile right. what you like from each one and what you don't like, and then we can, yeah. Peter and I can work on a, um, a, good idea. a new draft, whether we completely ditch what we've looked at already and start with something new or not. Okay. There, there are two uh, details that I liked. I think this is Concord, in the Concord mm -hmm. version. Um, yep. I like the minor versus major, and I like under the major, which it, it starts in page one and goes into page two, uh, number four, no more than four persons may be employed in the business use, only one of whom may not be an occupant of the residence. So that is a good limitation. And then uh, under number 10, letter E, use, uses which generate more than 20 vehicle trips per day based on criteria published in the latest edition of trip generation by the Institute of that's a pretty good constraint um, I think particularly for the use that you were describing um, which is not atypical and would I think align with a lot of the Portsmouth home-based occupations I actually like the fact that it it changes with the actual standard right if the standard changes it's following a standard that mm -hmm. sometimes gets updated so that's always nice um, Anything, any other comments? Or I'm happy to wait and take your written comments if you want to put something together and get it back to me. I can ask the others to do that as well as far as, you know, look at a specific jurisdiction out of all of these. If Concord is the one that everybody really likes, we can take a look at how adjusting ours to that or um, if some of the others. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you're gonna actually get us stuff? I will. <laughs> well, I know particularly uh, Joanna had right. some comments on that. She'll be chairing the next meeting, so you guys can have a deeper discussion about that when she's here. 
All right. If that's enough of that, we will wait for everyone to get back to us. Um, we'll do a verbal update from Howard. Good. Um, so I'll, I'll take uh, Chairman, if I may, out of order the agenda to go from uh, we'll start at item four with the update from the housing navigator. Um, just a reminder that the the deliverables purpose and um, my role is is grant based and under those grants uh, there's there's two one which is to, to uh, create the um, uh, position which I'm in now currently under contract uh, as the housing navigator the second is the housing opportunity grants uh, that, that happened and under those grants there's allowances for um, regulatory development and so with the regulatory development uh, we are engaging uh, RKG and they have started on their uh, financial market analysis so we're going to have some updates um, as they progress, uh, we had a kickoff meeting, and uh, they'll be coming up with some requests for information that, that I'll be providing them, and uh, they'll be doing some outreach with uh, market-driven entities in Portsmouth. And then part of that also overlays with some of the tasks that the, this committee is undertaking, and that's the public involvement plan. Uh, I've had a uh, good to, and very positive response for an, a number of peeping, uh, people that I've been reaching out to. These fall under key informant interviews, and I've accomplished about eight so far. I've got another four lined up next week. And these informant interviews are being done uh, with a certain level of confidentiality where uh, I gain one-on-one -on -one perspectives from them. Uh, it's a broad spectrum of people involved with housing in the city. And these will be disseminated into information that will go forward with the public involvement plan and then the outreach that we're tentatively scheduled for uh, later in uh, October and November. That hasn't been decided yet. We're finalizing efforts with a, a contract and scope and, and who's going to be supporting in what way that outreach with Portsmouth Listens. Uh, so I'll have more updates about that um, at the next meeting. The broad net that's being done with the key informant interviews is going to inform the, the, the plan. It's also providing uh, an opportunity for me as a housing nav navigator to set up a network of uh, people to speak with. And already we're starting to get an understanding of what questions to ask um, and, and who to speak with as this network develops uh, farther out. So as I mentioned, there's two grants. That's the, the Housing Opportunity Program. The other one is funding my efforts, which leads directly into uh, item number three, which is the ADU Handbook. And that is progressing uh, in terms of writing. Uh, we've engaged, uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, two architectural consultants. Um, they're going to be providing product during this week. And those products um, are to help visualize what the black and white lettering of the ADU zoning is uh, to help homeowners. That will be rolled into what I'm hoping to produce by uh, the next meeting, which is a, a basically a, a comprehensive draft of the ADU handbook. My other efforts that are being done regarding the ADU handbook uh, having to do with uh, ADU applications, since the revised uh, zoning for the ADU was done, uh, there's been an increase in traffic of people coming into the planning department meeting with Peter and myself, uh, informally having discussions. So there's, right now, uh, Peter and I have meeting with somebody this afternoon, uh, which will probably be uh, the ninth person that we've met over the last month and a half that's interested in creating an ADU. We are anticipating another two 
ADU units to come online uh, in the next two to three weeks. One is uh, completion of uh, their um, construction. So what I mean by online is the creation of a certificate of occupancy as well as certificate of use. Uh, there's another one that's in the pipeline that is bringing a non-conforming uh, residential unit uh, online. Uh, they need to bring it up to code. So that one uh, will be an, an issuance, but it will be conditional upon them meeting all the other um, required um, health and, and inspections. In terms of ADU, I want to bring attention to the Land Use Committee. There's currently a House Bill number 423 that is being brought forth by um, a member from the New Market um, area. And it's in committee under review right now, and they're actually discussing the ability or making a change of the current ADU uh, state-led um, statutory requirements. Uh, uh, instead of just having one ADU unit, they're considering two on half-acre lots. So uh, I'm just making you aware of that and see what happens in the future. Are they talking attached or detached or by right? Uh, I do not know any more than they're considering what if we do if we do two ADU. So going with that question, it could be possible that there's an attached that's interior to the building and they want to create a separate one. Mm. It could be two uh, that are detached as well. With the nine that are coming in meeting it informally, it is a broad spectrum of people interested in converting space inside the house, adding on, uh, it, converting things that are in their backyard, creating new ones in the backyard. So there's lots of interest, and it's just not um, showing up as just one ADU type. It, it's a spectrum as well. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any questions for our housing navigator based off his update? Anything else anybody wants to talk about before I open up public comment? No one's speaking, so. Um, we will take public comment now. If people would like to come up, uh, just sit in one of the chairs to use one of the microphones. Right. You'll have to state your name and address. Yes. Yes. Is that your because I can help you with that? Okay. Andrew? Good. Sure. Yeah. Well, Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so my name is Karen Rosania, and I live at 32 Boss Ave here in Portsmouth, and thank you for the opportunity to come and speak, and this is in relation to the home occupation and some of the considerations. So we thank you, and thank you to City Council for bringing this forward. So I am a newer resident artist and small business owner here in Portsmouth. Uh, my family moved here in 2021 for one primary reason, really, and it's the arts, um, in addition to it being a great community. And I've actually been trying to get my home studio approved to offer small art classes to adults, children, and individuals with special abilities. So I feel very passionate about that. And I've been trying to do that here in Portsmouth since last fall. So it's been quite a, uh, an endeavor. So um, after completing a program through the University of New Hampshire titled Start Your Own Arts and Crafts Business, um, they strongly encourage getting the right city town approvals if you are considering offering art classes in your home studio or face the risk of consequences of getting shut down uh, or, and or fined. So clearly really glad to see that you're looking at possible solutions. Also for the past seven months, I've been co-chairing the Portsmouth Cultural Plan Subcommittee, and we're currently working on a new cultural plan that many of you are aware of for the city of Portsmouth. I bring this up because in the last cultural plan, many Portsmouth residents raised concerns, and these are exact excerpts that I took from the plan, that Portsmouth has experienced an exodus, that's a key word, of its artisans and musicians, and there's a need to address zoning issues and building codes that are barriers for artists, including limitations on combined living working spaces, and I know you're looking at that, which is wonderful, and there's also a need to address affordable housing for artists. So we know a lot of artists have left Portsmouth, that's a fact, and we need to focus on ways to attract and, ret and re retain them. Uh, the issue of artist displacements is not unique to Portsmouth. It's an issue that many U.S. cities are facing as well, so much so that the Boston Globe actually just published a pretty sizable article on this a few weeks ago. 
So I do believe by allowing artists to teach small classes in their home studios will help address issues raised by many Portsmouth residents and help mitigate artist displacements. It will help bring the community together and help address significant issues like isolation for kids and adults. So what we're talking here is really the look and feel of inviting a small group of friends over for coffee or lunch. This is not a big production. I see no disruption to a neighborhood in terms of what I'm proposing. And if we look at other cities, which thank you, Peter, for pulling that in. I did review that. I thought it was great to look at other uh, cities across the state. I see some allowing four pupils, and I even saw one that allowed up to eight. I do believe somewhere in this range would be good for Portsmouth. The current proposal, and I know just through some of the additions, I know right now it's zero, um, but even the current proposal looking at two pupils or students or customers, or however we want to define them, in my opinion, would be inadequate, um, especially for our instruction. And then current hours is another thing I would just suggest that we look at right now for home occupation. It's listed as 8 to 5 p.m. and I don't believe that that accommodates working adults or working parents trying to bring their children to art classes within the 8 to 5 p.m. time range. Could we consider longer hours, maybe just a few days a week? And parking, I know, is certainly an issue in a city like Portsmouth. Could we consider adopting language already in existence in the current Portsmouth Zoning Ordinance amended uh, May of 2023? And I have the section here, 10-1113-42, uh, which already outlines acceptable parking for home occupation. Basically, I would, I would be able to put it in my driveway as long as it's appropriately screened with the right landscaping. I think that would be fine. Um, there's also family daycare is allowed in, in my zoning, and I think most zonings across Portsmouth. And there, too, I think there's four spaces that are allowed, um, two of which would be for the homeowner. So I think we have some parking language already in the current zoning that we might want to consider. And I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I think um, artists have been the lifeline for the city of Portsmouth. It's why I moved here. And I think it's by making some of these changes, we can um, retain and attract artists to Portsmouth moving forward. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi. Can I, I'm going to speak to the same issue as Karen. Hi. I'm a little nervous. Don't be. We're all just friends here. Oh, good. I also didn't bring my reading glasses. Nope. Just start with your name and okay. your location. And I, I wrote my thing down. Is this on? Mm -hmm. Okay. So my name is Sachiko Akiyama. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm here to address the same issues that Karen is speaking of. I am a sculptor and a professor at UNH in the art department. I moved to Portsmouth from Boston eight years ago to teach at UNH. I was fortunate enough to buy a studio, I mean buy a house and build a studio in my garage. I would love the option to be able to teach small classes in my studio. Um, during the years I've lived here, I've had artist friends move out of Portsmouth to nearby towns and cities that have more flexible zoning regulations or are more affordable to make a living as an artist. I know of artists who are looking for a place to live now and do not even consider Portsmouth for similar reasons. Two of my friends who, are long, who were longtime Portsmouth residents moved to another town nearby to build a studio and teach classes from their home. The only way I am able to afford to live here is because I have a full-time teaching job at the university. You might ask why a city would want to invest in attracting artists. If you look at the history, at history in current times, artists and creative people move to a location like neighborhoods in Brooklyn or the South End in Boston, and they make it in interesting and unique. Creative people are culture makers. As I watch the real estate prices increase and all the banks, hotels, and luxury condos move into Portsmouth, I worry that our city will become more generic and um, lose its uniqueness. I'm hoping, hoping that Portsmouth will consider attracting more ways, attracting more artists to the area, especially the younger generation. I think that measures the, like the ones that Karen was talking about could also possibly help increase racial diversity, especially um, affordable work spaces. Thank you. Thank you. Next.
Hi, Elizabeth Bradder, property owner, 159 McDonough Street. Um, I do like the Concord one because it has the minor and the major, or however you want to word them. I, I live with a man who drives around and sees opportunities where money could be made. We've had a lot of at-home businesses. They've ranged from used car sales to selling, tra selling um, trailers out of our home on the waterfront, which was legal. We got a permit for it. Tractor trailers were able to be brought in to do this. I was horrified. Needless to say, it no longer goes on. But when you're looking at home business, it is wonderful to support the arts. But if the arts is a dance class that has quite a few children, I um, used to drive my grandchildren to someone's home, and there would be 20 cars parked outside before and after class. The kids would get dropped off. Then you would wait for the time for your class to start. Then you would leave. You'd come back a little bit early because you don't want to be late picking up your kid in the dark. And your tw those 20 cars parked in this neighborhood right by their house. So parking is a big issue. Trucks are an issue. If you have a home office, you might have a small business where things are delivered. In my case, it was trailers. They came on 18-wheelers, not little small you know, trucks like the refrigerator is coming, but a regular 18-wheeler because of the type of, you have to have a forklift to take them off. Those are all normal parts of business. So I think when you look at business, it's great to look at something simple like an art class um, and think of maybe three people would be there or four. But then if you think of a dance class that I go to over at the dance studio in, where there's over 100 people in my dance class, that's a dance class. So you have to think about that there have to be limits on it. All of this detail is important. Don't go without the details because that makes for loopholes and that makes for questionable things. And you also want to make sure that you distinguish between what neighborhood they're allowed to go into. So do we want to allow a home office that allows eight to 10 people with a major thing in a GRA or CD1 or that kind of stuff? So those are things I think to keep in mind. In regards to the lovely list, the only, so I've done this before, but on a very small scale. When they were rezoning the area behind McDonough Street, um, I was the one who notified all the neighbors of the zoning changes and what they looked like. So it was very helpful to see on your list the one, two, three, four, five zoning, but the only thing that was missing, which I think would be helpful for all because it seemed to be the conversation, was G1 and G2 were not shown. One of the things that I try to do when I make these kind of lists is I try to, and you can see it on this page as I was reading through, I highlight only the differences. So if G1 and G2 are the same for all of these things, then I really make a difference by either highlighting them in a color or something that shows you what the difference is. Because I think that's the key questions everybody had, was what is the difference between G1 and G2 and OR and industrial? And those would be really important to know. Um, in regards to the houses that are that are on uh, opposite of Lafayette, like the MRB that's already been rezoned, um, where the veterinary office is on the. I'm trying to think what number it was. Now I have to look up the numbers. But I think that should just stay MRB because that's been used as that for for years. If not, it should be changed to SRB. Which is, which is the rest of that neighborhood. I'm trying to find my list. Um, some of the ones you mentioned are important. I think what, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. What he mentioned about industrial is very important. If you drop off a child at the soccer field in community campus and you look up, above you is the plant that's breaking up stones all day long. So the kids who are playing soccer are breathing all of that stuff. I thought, oh my God, this is horrible. What do you do when you play soccer? You run and breathe in deeply, and you've got this plant right above it that these kids are breathing. So I really believe that industrial and residential should be very carefully looked at in terms of do we want to allow residential next to very, res uh, res very high end industrial, such as what you were showing down by Oriental Gardens where there's those tanks, whatever they have in them, I don't know. And until they're out, maybe leave that industrial because you really don't want that kind of 
you don't want to encourage that kind of mixing of people living there. There's a big difference between living under something and just going there to visit to see whether it could be usable. So those are things I think should be kept in mind. Um, I like that you're going to modify the list. I can't wait to see the new and improved list. Thank you for all the work that you guys are doing. I know how hard it was just to do the two neighborhoods on both sides of the pond and one small area compared to doing the whole city. So I appreciate all the work that's going into it. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Morning, Petra Huda, 280 South Street. Um, I'm going to talk about the uh, number one, the uh, the rezoning. I guess the first question I would have to you when you're considering any of this um, is looking at the size and what benefit it would give you for what your goal is. Um, if you're if you just look at the size and looking at some of the sides of these lots, um, one point uh, one point three point point three zero. I mean, even if you combine some of these lots, are you going to get a benefit that you could do what your intention here is going to be to do? The next question, um, I think a big, a big point that was brought up by Mr. Simonis, the infrastructure that's surrounding these areas, um, especially the traffic, especially um, can, can all of the infrastructure, if you change it from one to the other, um, spe specifically, even if you're considering industrial, um, I still think that's a, gr a great point. But um, I think the infrastructure surrounding any of these um, should be considered. Um, the next thing, um, I think the first thing I'm really looking forward to is getting the answer that um, Mr. Chelman asked on the taxes. You're, you're talking here about other people's property and changing them, and um, hopefully it won't be a surprise and they'll get a, they'll get a different bill. I think that's one of the first considerations um, that we should look at, and I was very glad that that was brought up. Um, the, other, the last thing here is um, I guess we need to answer the question here, are we just changing this to change it? Um, some, of the, some of the things on here are um, public, the, the, it's public service property. It's municipal uh, vacant land. I mean, it's good to look at some of this stuff and, and open it up, but it also opens up abutting properties to having to deal with other, other issues. And I think the prime issue of that would be um, the Westerly and um, Elwyn Park coming out to say if you put apartments where the, where the um, old veterinary clinic was, it's going to really affect our traffic. And I, get, I think that goes back to the discussion that should be included here about infrastructure and who needs to use what and, and how it affects what's currently there. Um, I thank you for doing this. This is a lot of work. And um, I hope, hopefully um, look forward to your next skinny down list. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Hi, my name is Liza Hewitt. I live at 726 Middle Road. Um, I'm just going to speak more from a resident point of view. I, I'm not a zoning expert by any means, don't even understand half of this, but I'm willing to listen and kind of consider what you're talking about. Um, I guess my question is, what's the ultimate plan here? Um, kind of piggybacking a little bit on what um, Ms. Huda said. Um, I thought we were talking, having a discussion, because I do come to all these meetings, so I do kind of follow this. Um, I thought we were talking about increasing housing, but it seems the discussion today has moved into way more than, than housing. So I, I guess I'm just a little confused about, you know, what the goal in all of this was. Um, as I said, I don't know a lot about zoning, but I question how you're deciding to make these changes. Um, you know, are you following some kind of system? Is there a criteria here for considering these zoning changes? Um, I have to admit, again, as a resident, it se all seems a little random. You know, we're looking at this property. Oh, let's change this to this. Oh, well, we could consider changes. And it kind of feels like an eeny, meeny, miny, mo approach to zoning. Um, and, and so I guess, you know, getting back to that criteria, do you, do, like, is everybody on the same page here as to why you're making changes, how you're making changes, what you're considering in the changes? Because 
you know, as a novice here, it, it, it doesn't seem that way. Um, I also have questions about at what point you're planning, and hopefully you are, um, to bring in the businesses and the residents who own properties in these areas for their thoughts. Um, I thought that you had hired a housing person. It, it sounds maybe not like that, considering what Mr. Snyder just went through, but I thought there was a consultant that was doing a lot of work around this housing and what's needed and you know what Portsmouth needs and looking at all of that. And don't you think they should be involved in this if indeed the ultimate plan here was to look at increasing housing? Why aren't they sitting at the table? Um, you're talking about a lot of zoning changes. At least it felt that way to me. I mean, changing almost everything up and down, you know, all of Lafayette. And then finally, as a resident, I didn't put in a plug. I love having my businesses on Lafayette Road. I love being able to drive down that street and, you know, be able to take my my pet to the vet, go to the bank, do my grocery shopping, stop into urgent care if I need it, take my kids bowling. You know, you can do it all right there. So as you're discussing how you're changing all of this zoning, I hope that the message is not being sent that you want to kind of force out the businesses in favor of putting all this housing because you're still going to need businesses. Um, you know, in a city of 22,000 people, you still need businesses. And if you change everything to housing and you don't think about some of what's been talking, uh, talked about, the infrastructure change, et cetera, um, I, I think that, that you're not doing it with your eyes wide open. Um, you know, housing, we need it. Everybody agrees that to that. But what are we sacrificing for that? I think that needs to be much more of a, um, of a conversation here. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? If you're on Zoom and you'd like to talk, please raise your hand. And no one else in the room. Um, just to address a couple of things that were said, uh, the what's allowed in the gateway is part of that packet. It's just at the very end. The two gateways are side by side. They are in there. I know it was brought up whether or not it was there. Um, and I think that was, was there anything else? <laughs> Uh, we are, you know, this is just the very beginning of this conversation on all of these topics. There's obviously going to be a lot more outreach, but we have to start the conversation somewhere. Our overall goal when we were looking at this is to make, um, we first put in the gateway to get more housing. So we're just trying to figure out how to then take that gateway and maybe possibly expand it a little bit. Um, and it's not to take away businesses, it's to just expand the flexibility um, of our zoning to be able to put housing in if people wish to add that to those places where some businesses are. So, Hello. Hello. Please state your name and address for the record. It's Jackie Callie Pitts and I'm who you, Jackie Callie Pitts. I live on Bedford Way in Portsmouth. But I spend a lot of time right on Route 1. And I have to tell you that I don't understand what the goal is for what you're doing. If you're going to expand housing, that's one thing. But what you do on Lafayette Road needs to be done carefully. The one point I want to make, there's about 19 I'd like to make, but I just want to make one, that this is an evacuation route. And as you go to expand things on Route 1, has anyone taken that into consideration? That's all. Thank you very much. Sorry. Anyone else have anything else they want to say? All right, our next meeting is October 6th. Um, I have asked our assistant mayor, Kelly, to chair it because I will be out of town. I will try to listen in if I'm able to, but um, otherwise, thank everyone for coming, and I hope you have a great Labor Day weekend. Bye, everyone.